I'm Mike Farrington. Welcome back to my shop, aka the boardroom. So these days, the shop apprentice only has two speeds, and that's stop and running. In this video, I'm going to be building some tool storage, and I'm calling it a tool tansu. And I get started by breaking down some MDF. Here are my notes for the job. You can see the final draft, and here's my rough draft. This project was spurred on by the fact that I rearranged my shop. And I moved my main workbench as well as a secondary workbench closer to a staircase. And after scooting everything in place, I looked at the staircase and realized that was the perfect place to store my tools. And in Japanese furniture making, a kaiden tansu is a particular type of chest that has a staircase shape to it. And I've always really liked that furniture form. So that was the inspiration for this tool storage project, and hence the name. After doing some math, which is this new fandangled thing I think they're teaching in high schools these days, I realized I could get three 30-inch wide cabinets under the stairs. And with a 30-inch wide cabinet, the rise versus the run would look fairly nice as well. When I want to knock some cabinets together real quick, there's nothing faster than staples and screws. And the staples are really just used to hold the cabinet together uh, while I put the screws in. So when it's warm enough, I have opposing roll-up doors on my shop. And as you can see, it just blows the dust right out back into nature and it probably ends up landing on my tomato plants. So I've built a million shop cabinets over the years, and this is the first one that I've decided to round over all the edges on. And with MDF, that really helps. It'll save your knuckles when you're reaching in and out to grab tools uh, and you're in a hurry. In the shot, you can see I have the two smaller cabinets built and sitting in place, and I'm finishing up the construction of the largest cabinet here. If you want to have good results when using MDF, a tapered countersink really helps. And also, move your screw away from the end a couple of inches, and that will also help prevent splitting. Oh yeah, and one more thing, don't over-tighten the screws, just tighten them enough till they seat. My two standard assembly screws are inch and a quarter, which I'm using here to apply the back, and I use inch and three quarter to hold the case together. At this point, I have the cabinets assembled, and I move on to building a toe kick. So I'm using two and a half inch strips to put this toe kick together, and at this point, I don't realize that that's going to be a problem, because on my awesome working drawings that I showed you in the beginning of the video, it clearly stated I needed a two inch tall toe kick. So about five minutes after I was done filming this, I realized my mistake, and I knocked it all apart and cut everything down, and it really didn't take too long to fix the issue. And I know I don't show it here, but each of these joints is held together with two staples, and I come back and put a screw into each joint as well. Originally, I'd planned to push the cabinets all the way up against the wall. After putting them together and kind of roughing them in place, I realized it just it felt too far under the staircase. So I made this little standoff to kind of bring everything out from the wall a little bit. All right, here's the reason I like a separate toe kick. I like to have a nice big wide surface. I can level that surface very accurately, and then I can just slap the cabinets on top. To me, this is much easier than leveling cabinets that have integrated toe kicks. And my process for leveling a toe kick is I check the level both directions, then I level it front to back, and then I finish off by leveling it left to right. All right, and this is what I look like when I can't get a grip on a cabinet to slide it in place. After sliding the three cabinets in place, I was actually pretty happy with the way this looked. I thought it was going to look really cool.
At this point the cabinets are all put together and I decided to turn my attention to making a whole bunch of drawer boxes. So the place I buy my materials from sells what they call Baltic birch in a 4x8 sheet. It's half inch thick, it's actually 12 millimeters thick and it has nine plies. Really makes for great drawer boxes. Note the twin flip stop setup. This really helps maximize yield out of each of the strips that I cut. And for these drawer boxes, the sides are cut to 22 and the fronts and backs are cut to 26 and a half. The last operation before assembling the drawer boxes is to run a one quarter inch groove about a half an inch up from the bottom. Here's a shot of the new shop layout and you can see that there's so much more room for activities. In my opinion, glue and nails is plenty strong for a drawer box that's going to be carried on a ball bearing drawer slide. And the reason for this is the drawer slide allows the drawer to slide in and out with very little friction, so the joinery really isn't stressed. One quarter inch thick MDF slides into the groove nicely. It helps square up the drawer box as well. And I'm using one inch long 18 gauge brads to hold these together. Small round over on all the top edges. And completed drawer boxes are stacked neatly. Here's a close-up of the drawer slides I'm going to use. They're 22 inches in length and they break down into two pieces, one for the cabinet and one for the drawer box. Let's talk about the Blum Universal Drilling Template. This tool costs a little more than $100, but it will pay for itself in just a project or two because it is so useful. In this project, I use this template to help me install the drawer slides both on the drawer boxes and on the cabinet sides. And I also used it to help install the hinge plates as well. Aside from being very accurate, the thing that I like most about this tool is how fast it sets up. So I have several larger machines that do the same job that this template does, but the problem is they take somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes to set up. Whereas with this jig, you pop it out of the drawer, you grab your drill, you put the drill in the chuck, and you're ready to go. And here I'm showing that the drawer fronts are going to be inset, and that means they're going to sit inside the opening of the cabinet versus lay over top of the edges of the cabinet. When using this jig, I like to cut a spacer, and this ensures that the drawer slides will be dead parallel to the bottom, and that the left and right sides will be equal height from the bottom. After the highest series of holes has been drilled, I measure, cut the template down, and drill the next series of holes, and so on. The one downside to this jig is it's too short. So you can only drill about halfway into a 24 inch deep cabinet. So what that means is uh, sometimes you're gonna have to come back and add a screw towards the back of the drawer slide after installing them. But at least at that point, the drawer slide is positioned perfectly and all you're doing is adding a screw for reinforcement. And as a side note, I have put in a call to Bloom and requested that they make one of these templates longer and so far that's fallen on deaf ears. Up to this point, I've been using a 5mm drill bit with a stop collar, so that allows me to use these 5mm system screws. And because the connection between the drawer slide and the cabinet is so strong with a 5mm system screw, I'm just putting three screws in and I'm not even going to add an additional screw to the back of the drawer slide. But if things shift around a little, I can always go back and add a screw. Because the drawer slides are half inch thick, we need to use a 7 16 panhead screw to hold the slide to the drawer box, so I switch over to a 2.5 millimeter pilot hole. It's during this operation that this jig shows its weakness most, and that is it's a little bit too short. 
with these drawer slides, and it's important to note that each length of drawer slide, the whole pattern is different, but with these drawer slides, I can only get two screws drilled with the template. So I have to come back and add a third screw towards the back of the drawer slide. And I locate that third screw with an automatic punch. After building the 11 normal drawer boxes, I came up with this solution for the smallest cabinet. And I think it's going to work good to house my lipping planer, which is a tool I like to have quick access to. With the drawer boxes built and the drawer slides installed, it's time to install the cabinets themselves permanently. Up to this point, I just had them temporarily sitting there. I also added some sheeting behind the cabinets because I didn't want to look at the insulation through my staircase. I thought that would get really annoying. And eventually I am going to put sheeting up on all of the walls at some point when I get around to it. When installing cabinets, I start by clamping and screwing the cabinets together first. And I make sure to put screws in the front of the cabinet as well as the back of the cabinet. And once all of the cabinets have been screwed together, I make any final adjustments to their positioning and then I screw them down to the toe kick. After sliding in all the drawer boxes, I took a step back and looked at the project and so far I was really happy. I thought it looked really cool. And now it's time to turn my attention to making some doors and drawer fronts. After cutting the drawer fronts to size, I use Bloom drawer adjusters to install them. And I start by drilling two 20 millimeter holes in the back side of the drawer fronts. And then I temporarily install these 20 millimeter center punches into those holes. And then I add some 1 8 inch spacers to help position the drawer front. And then I get the drawer front as close to its final position as possible, and I press on the drawer front to make two dimples in the drawer box. And those two dimples mark the locations where I need to drill to put a couple of screws through. Next, I remove the center punches and add the drawer box adjusters themselves. These are 20 millimeters in diameter and they friction fit pretty tight into the 20 millimeter holes that I drilled a couple of minutes ago. Now, the cool thing about these adjusters is they have a little play. So you screw them in and you can kind of shimmy the drawer front around a little bit until it's in the perfect position, then tighten everything down. Also note that I don't rely on these drawer box adjusters as the final connection to hold the drawer front to the drawer box. After I get everything in place, I come back and I add a couple of screws. And these drawer box adjusters work great. Once you get your system down, it, they go pretty quick and they allow you to get near perfect gaps around all of your drawer fronts. After the drawer fronts, I move on to the doors. After a five second adjustment to the jig, I'm ready to drill some holes for the hinge plates. These holes are being drilled further back than the traditional 37 millimeters. I don't remember what the exact dimension was, but that's because the doors will be inset. And in about two shakes of a lamb's tail, we have two perfectly positioned pilot holes ready for a hinge plate. And now I'm drilling the three hole pattern for the hinges. But fear not, if you don't have one of these hinge press machines, you can use a drill press. You can get hinges that use only the 35 millimeter center cup and then they're attached with wood screws. And there are also a few available jigs that help you drill this three-hole pattern. And if you can drill this three-hole pattern, you can use these Bloom Inserta hinges. And I must say, these things are the cat's pajamas. 
Once the hinges are installed in the doors, installing the door to the cabinet is super easy. If you look closely, you'll notice that this door closes too far. So that's the next issue we'll need to solve here is to set up a door stop. And I like to use these Euro door stops made by FastCap. You can see the hole is eccentric, so there is some adjustability when installing these. And don't worry, most of my ancestors come from Europe, so that makes any door that I produce at least 1 16th European, and therefore eligible to use these stops. All right, enough jokes, back to work. So after getting these door stops installed, the door closes right to the perfect spot. After the doors and drawers were fitted, I took them all out and gave them a quick round over. Next, it was time to install some door and drawer poles. And if you want to see how I organized this sustainer as well as a couple others, check out my video, Carpentry Tool Organization. And since I lack the ability to throw anything away, I was fortunate that these door and drawer handles were extra from a job from like 15 years ago. So I finally get to put them to use. And actually, I think they fit this project pretty good. They're comfortable, easy to use, and I think the black looks good with the raw MDF. Here I'm just going to give a quick demonstration of the adjustability of these bloom hinges. And you can see here that the door is not sitting square in the opening and it's rubbing on the bottom of the opening. And from this orientation, the door adjusts up, down, in and out, and left and right. And this clip was originally about 35 to 40 seconds long. And in that amount of time, you now have a perfectly fitting door. Once the cabinets were finished, I built a few small tool organizers and then I put everything away. And I thought I'd close this one out with a short tour of the finished product. In this section, I have stored the things that I want access to quickly and most often. And I kicked around the idea of putting doors on this section, but I just thought it would be annoying and they would get in the way. In this section, I have my drills as well as extra batteries and chargers. And as you can see, I created a little holster here for my Bosch driver. And I wanted to be able to turn off all the chargers, so I hooked everything up to a master switch. And in the winter when it's freezing cold, I like hot coffee, so I have a small hot plate. And here in this funky drawer, I have my lipping planer as well as five or six routers that are each dedicated to a particular function. And these center five drawers really contain the items that I use the most often, the large domino, my Mafel Duo Dowler, as well as the Lamello Biscuit Joiner, and the small domino. And I was able to stuff most of the accessories to go with each of these tools in these drawers. In the drawer above that, I have a bunch of cabinet making and hardware jigs. And I also left some room to grow. And above that, I have my selection of screws as well as countersinkers and drivers. And in this far set of six drawers, I have some routers, some glue, nails, selection of hand tools like pliers and channel locks, and other random stuff. Overall, I'm really happy with the end results. I think this looks really cool. I'm looking forward to using it, and I'm also looking forward to making any adjustments needed to make it more efficient. It also feels really nice to clean up one small corner of the shop and get it finished. And now it's time to move on and tackle the next job.